So good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining this uh, <coughs> online webinar of the UNIMED week in Brussels. Uh, although this is a virtual statement, but uh, I think Mrs. Russo and uh, Mrs. Mohamia are really in Brussels, we are not. Uh, the theme of today's uh, <coughs> webinar is about uh, the international dimension of Horizon Europe, which is the current framework program. The framework program has historically been uh, one of the most open programs to external cooperation. Uh, and however, the, 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 the precise procedures and forms of this cooperation has evolved through, uh, throughout the years and throughout the different versions. So we are very much excited to hear from the commission uh, what will be the new forms of cooperation and initiatives uh, in this frame. But before going into this, I would like uh, to ask Marcello to I give a word of welcome to all of our friends from the southern and northern shores of the Mediterranean. Marcello, the floor is yours. Grazie, Daniero. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. First of all, let me thank uh, Maria Cristina Russo from the European Commission for uh, not only for her participation today, but for their continuous support to UNIMED and the UNIMED Week in particular, but not only. Uh, it's an important occasion today because uh, we, we talk not only about an important program of the European Commission, and in particular, an important opportunity for universities in the Mediterranean region. But in the, the, this webinar today is extremely important for another reason. We started many years ago to cooperate with DG Research. Uh, and uh, the first edition of the UNIMED week, but also before than that. And the main uh, goal of our cooperation with the research was exactly what we are trying to do continuously, to improve the, the participation of the Southern Mediterranean universities in this important program of Europe. Uh, that is different than the Erasmus, the Erasmus Plus. The Erasmus Plus program is dedicated to capacity building, the idea to improve capacity of Southern Mediterranean universities in education, governance, and so on. Uh, the research program is in a totally different aspect. We are partners. We are not working to transfer capacity, but we are working to solve common problems. And this different approach is extremely uh, exciting for all of us, uh, both sides. Uh, to try to show that obviously there are differences in our region, there are differences in terms of capacity of the universities, in particular in research and innovation. But working together, we could try at least to address common solution to the most important, the most important priorities that we have in our region, looking at uh, climate change and migration. And, and many other. I don't want to, to do the list of our priorities. But there is another important opportunity in our region for our research institutions is to also to enlarge our dimension, to go beyond the, of the Mediterranean region and to look at cooperation with Africa. And I think that in this, in this perspective, European universities and North Africa and Middle East universities and research center could play an important could play an important role. Uh, UNIMED will be in the next years will be at your disposal. I mean, at disposal of members and partners, but also disposal of the European Commission uh, to improve this dimension and obviously to help our members to be more active and hopefully also successful in participating in this uh, important opportunity of the European Commission, that which is uh, at the end of the day is the most important institution that is continuously investing in the Mediterranean region. Mediterranean region remain uh, one of the most important priorities of the European Commission. We already discussed it with the external action service in the first day of the UNIMED week about the new agenda of the European Commission for Southern Mediterranean. And there are several opportunities for all of us. Obviously, we are facing an important and difficult moment of our life, personal level, but also professional level. 
internationalization in a way is under risk for all the problems that we are facing uh, with COVID-19 and so on. But after one year and a half, I think that we can say that probably, I don't know if internationalization is the solution of our problems, but I can't see a world without internationalization in the future. Uh, this is the reason why we have continued to work together to, to join our efforts to, for our communities, for our societies. And in this perspective, the work that European Commission and the, interna the international dimension of European Commission, in particular in research and innovation is extremely important. Thank you very much again uh, to Ms. Russo and all their colleagues that work uh, on this for this perspective. And uh, thank you for your participation. Just a technical issue. Please introduce yourself in the chat, but also uh, this webinar will be recorded and will be at your disposal also for future uh, possibilities and also for all the people registered because we have around 100 people registered, but now it seems that people is more uh, happy with the offline recording session than online. Thank you very much again, Reniero, grazie. Well, I don't think I have to introduce uh, Maria Cristina Russo to many of you because I, she has been so active in Southern Mediterranean cooperation for many years. I, I, I met her, I remember, in Morocco some years ago. She was dealing with the association agreement and things like that. Uh, she is the uh, director for international cooperation. I'm simplifying, uh, Maria Cristina, forgive me. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the title at uh, uh, Director uh, General for Research and, uh, and Innovation. And uh, our question this morning to you, Mrs. Russo, is please give us the relevant information about international cooperation. The uh, Horizon Europe uh, program is so wide, it includes so many instruments and so many different uh, ways uh, of, of participating that uh, myself, I sometimes get lost in, in trying to understand exactly what we can do. So please simplify our lives and give us some straight indication about what international cooperation means, especially for the Southern Mediterranean uh, region in terms of horizon. Thank you very much. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Raniero. You are giving me a huge task in order to try to simplify the, the world in which we have to, uh, to, to work, but I will certainly do my best. Um, apologies uh, for uh, uh, having some uh, connection issues after so, 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 such a long time that uh, we work online, it still happens. It means that we are human. <laughs> and, um, and first of all, uh, I'm very pleased to be here. I think uh, this is the sixth edition of the Unimed Week. And uh, if I recall correctly, I've been following those editions from the beginning. And there I would really like to, to thank you also for uh, always associating me and to me, DG Research and Innovation, to this fantastic work uh, that uh, you are doing. And uh, in particular, my thanks to Marcello, who is uh, um, managing uh, all this work in such an excellent way. And uh, I think that uh, really lots of progress have been, uh, have been done also um, in, um, in, uh, if you, in, in using this, uh, the platform such as uh, in Unimed uh, Week to really promote uh, the awareness of the huge and not so difficult opportunities that exist in research and innovation cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean universities uh, uh, through uh, the European Union and in particular to the research and innovation. We cannot hear you, Christina. We cannot hear you. You didn't hear anything? No, 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 just the last sentence. Ah, okay, good. <laughs> there must be some problems this morning. I'm, I'm sorry for that. But my last sentence was very important because I was congratulating Marcello and you, Raniero, for the work that you're doing. So I would like uh, the, all the UNIMED participants uh, hear that. Because I think that uh, the platforms uh, la, um, like UNIMED and this UNIMED uh, week are really important in order to diffuse the information and raise the awareness on all the uh, possibilities that exist under the EU research 
programs and policy. So uh, let me make a step backwards. Um, in, in, before speaking about Horizon Europe, I would like to speak about the policy context because I think this is very important. Uh, Marcello already uh, referred to the new European Union strategy with the Southern Mediterranean region, which was adopted by the European Commission and the External Action Service in uh, February this year. And uh, what, uh, what is really very important uh, to highlight is that uh, research is a, a, a very important element. It's a central element of this new relationship that we want to have with the Southern Mediterranean. Also picking again on what Marcello said, because uh, it's really based on uh, a common ownership. Um, here to the research and innovation program, our researchers, can, go to, can get together in partnership. It's really this sense of partnership, of working together um, in, in order to tackle together the um, important uh, and big societal challenges. So this idea of partnership between the EU, the European Union researchers and the Southern Mediterranean ones is really at the, at the at a central element of our new strategy. Um, also, um, the European Commission has adopted the, the new strategy on international cooperation in May 2021, the global approach uh, to research and innovation, uh, which in fact uh, um, is uh, uh, revamping and putting up to date the international cooperation strategy, which uh, uh, existed and dated back of 2012 and was uh, the basis for the international cooperation design of the previous research program. With this new strategy, we explain how we deal with international cooperation in the new Horizon Europe research and innovation program. I will not be very long on that, and maybe it would be, it would be good uh, to UNIMED if you would like to, to distribute, to diffuse this document, uh, which we are very proud. We are very proud because uh, this is so far the, uh, the only um, international cooperation uh, uh, communication related to what we call a sectorial policy, which has been adopted by the European Commission and the External Action Service, which in fact acknowledges in that way and recognizes the importance of research with, within our external action. That's, 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 that's a key message. What research cooperation can do in order to build concrete ties in this case, between the two shores of the Mediterranean. And, um, and also a uh, link to that, all what we do to the concept of science diplomacy that you know very well, and there will not be long on that. So the main elements on the new strategy for international cooperation in research and innovation of the global approach is that we want to continue to be as open as possible. We are an open uh, area of, uh, of research, we are a European research area which wants to be open to the world, and we want to um, enhance our cooperation with our strategic partners, such as the Southern Mediterranean region, which is in fact an important strategic partner. We want to be able to design our cooperation in a way that it matches better those uh, uh, key thematic issues which uh, are at the core of the action of the European Union. For example, the Green Deal, the digital transition, the health cooperation. So we want to focus our activities more in, in, uh, in matching them in the needs for uh, which exist in those sectors. We all know the very ambitious objectives that the European Commission and the European Union has set for uh, the climate change uh, re leading to a climate neutrality for 2050. And if we don't uh, do an effort in terms of research and innovation, if we don't join up our forces, we will not be at easy in uh, matching these objectives. So hence the importance of really concentrating our action on these uh, key strategic activities. Novelty of these uh, strategies that uh, we have also um, put in place some measures which exist in Horizon Europe to be able to limit this opening when it is necessary, when there are sectors or activities that could jeopardize the European Union interest. We have uh, um, included some um, 
in legal means to, to restrict uh, the, the, the opening of Horizon, of Horizon Europe. But again, let me be very precise. We have the possibility to have some restrictions because we want to be open. So the opening is our default option. And there we want to attract the best researchers and the best innovators from the world and from those regions with which we have a really strong political interest in cooperating, such as the Southern Mediterranean one. Now, as I mentioned, the strategy is um, reflects the policy choices that have been made in Horizon Europe. Let me say some words on Horizon Europe, which uh, in fact uh, has been adopted this year and it has uh, been uh, put in motion. The first calls have been launched in, um, in before summer. And again, I'm very pleased to say and proud to say that Horizon Europe is the biggest research and innovation multilateral program of the world. And it is open to all research institutions and universities of the world. That also um, links to what Marcello said beforehand, that uh, uh, through Horizon Europe, our researchers from the two shores of the Mediterranean can cooperate, but they can also cooperate with the best brains and talents of the world. Because in fact, uh, the, way, um, the way that participation is foreseen in Horizon Europe, following also the schemes of the previous research program, is that there are consortia of researchers which are grouped, which have must have a, a kind of core of research institutions from a member state or associated countries to which researchers, universities from the rest of the world, from the South Med and other countries, can join up in order to um, in order to can team up in order to bid for those projects that uh, are launched within the Horizon Europe uh, uh, work programs and call and uh, and if selected can work together and in most cases for the southern Mediterranean countries can also be financed to the to the European Union. Again, as uh, it was mentioned, the program is based on scientific excellence. It's a, it's a program that uh, uh, goes a step uh, um, beyond the capacity building. And for that, we really, we are making a, a huge effort in the European Commission to create as synergies as possible with the international cooperation programs, those programs which support the capacity building, in particular in the, in the South Med, in the, in the, in the African um, continent, and in other um, in, in in other third countries, in order to 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 have the possibility that through this program program programs capacity building is enhanced, giving also the the researchers a, a way to be more competitive for participating in the Horizon Europe program. My experience, which is very long, I said that uh, I was uh, six years, uh, it's, my, it's my sixth uh, Unimed week, and uh, Raniero, you very kindly said that I've been working a lot in the Southern Mediterranean region, so I can say without pretending of being an expert that I, I know quite well. And what I've seen that uh, there is a really a huge amount of uh, scientific excellence in the South Mediterranean region. There is a lot. The universities that uh, are part of the UNIMED, they, they do possess this scientific, uh, uh, this scientific excellence in uh, specific sectors. So I think that uh, those events like the one that, uh, that, uh, that you're having today are, are really um, essential in order to raise awareness of the fact that this program exists. Now important to retain that the new research innovation program, the new EU research and innovation program has been launched. It is open to participation. And there, um, I think uh, within uh, your network, your universities, it's important to see where are the sectors where you have the, um, where you have, uh, the, the, the scientific excellence which is needed and finding the right partners in order to team up and participate in the proposals. And for that, the UNIMED model, which gathers the two shores of the Mediterranean, it's really essential. Let me say also that uh, specifically, 
for the Euro Mediterranean cooperation, we are uh, we, we have a specific uh, um, forum since uh, many years, uh, which uh, which uh, it puts together the senior officials from the European Union and from the Southern Mediterranean countries in order to decide together which are the areas in which uh, we could uh, um, promote, we should promote and uh, uh, design concrete cooperation activities. And uh, we have now uh, upgraded this, uh, this uh, what we called uh, this, uh, the, the meeting of senior officials from the South Med and European Union um, within the, and we have those kind of platform within the framework of the uh, Union for the Mediterranean. And we have set up within the Union, the Union for the Mediterranean, a specific platform for research and innovation. And in this context, we have been uh, um, very, we had, the, we had the discussions with the experts from the two shores of the Mediterranean. And we have adopted a concrete roadmaps for cooperation in key areas, as I mentioned at the beginning of the intervention, the areas which are key priorities for the European Union, namely climate change, renewable energies, and health. And we have then adopted at the level of the experts concrete roadmaps that uh, maybe would be useful, Raniero, if possible, to distribute also to the participants so that they can see in details without me being too long uh, on that now. And uh, what uh, is important for me to say is that on the basis of these, uh, of these uh, roadmaps, we would like to launch um, a specific um, a South Mediterranean oriented call in the next Horizon Europe work program. Now, I, let me say, you will hear in some minutes from my colleague, uh, Fadila Bougamini. She will explain uh, what we have done broad, broadly for Africa in the first work program of Horizon Europe. I have not said, maybe I should say that Horizon Europe has a duration of seven years and the calls are launched at the annual um, every two years through dedicated work programs. We have now launched the work program 2021 and 2022 with a dedicated trans-African um, platform, uh, platform. We would like to, we are building now a dedicated Euro-Mediterranean one for the next work program, which should be based on those roadmaps that we have adopted at the level of the experts, and that uh, for which we seek political endorsement, and uh, we would like to have this political endorsement through a meeting of research and innovation ministers from the two shores of the Mediterranean that we would like to organize at the beginning of next year, and also the, um, the also with the with the French. Uh, colleagues which will be chairing the Council of uh, the European Union. So to sum up, because I would like really that uh, you, you have uh, some key elements uh, clear in mind that uh, you bring with you on the research and innovation side. First of all, a new strategy on uh, international cooperation on research and innovation. We want to be open. Our policy is open. We want to work with the best scientists in the world. And uh, we want to focus our cooperation on key strategic areas like the South Med and on key strategic sectors uh, related to the twin transition, uh, uh, Green Deal and digital transition and to, and to health. First point. Second point, Horizon Europe program adopted this year. The first calls have been launched, the biggest research program in the world, fully open to participation of research organizations and universities. And uh, the third point, is the fact that uh, we are preparing dedicated uh, um, roadmaps for uh, a specific uh, uh, actions to enhance cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean, which will be included in the next work program. But let me not uh, get you into a misunderstanding. 
in the next work program uh, there will be dedicated uh, actions for the southern Mediterranean, but in this work program you can already participate in all the actions that exist, out of which some are very much uh, um, connected with the subjects that uh, have been discussed in order to enhance the cooperation with the southern Mediterranean. And from a broader point of view, uh, all the countries from the southern Mediterranean are welcome to participate in this uh, transversal Africa call about which uh, my dear colleague Fadila will speak in a moment. I will conclude by saying uh, that uh, the activities uh, like this one are very, very important to raise the awareness to really, um, to, to really create those matches between the two shores of the Mediterranean that are needed in order for our researchers, for our universities to fully tap the potential of the EU research innovation policy and of the uh, Horizon Europe program. I hope that I have simplified a bit the landscape, <laughs> at least I did my best. And I really thank you very much to you, Raniero, to you, Marcello, and to all the, 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 the colleagues and members uh, from the UNIMED for the fantastic work uh, that you're doing. And you can continue to always count on the European Commission on Research and Innovation Directory General and on myself and my colleagues. Thank you. Okay, now, now you can hear me. Thank you very, very much for, uh, for this presentation. Thank you for your uh, extremely kind words vis-a-vis uh, <laughs> -vis the work that we are trying to do. Uh, and uh, in this line, for instance, as many of the people who are attending know, uh, because uh, in the frame of my UNIMED activities, I have been nominated by the European Union as an ambassador of the Climate Pact. I decided to organize uh, a series of webinars to explain to our colleagues from the Southern Mediterranean uh, shore uh, interested in climate change, which are the calls, the Horizon Europe calls where they can participate. And we are, I think we are going to repeat that in the future. Uh, but because we have gone into now the uh, practical side of how to participate, which is I'm pretty sure our colleagues are, are, are keen to know, I would like to give the floor to uh, Fadila Bogdemi who is uh, uh, actually <clears throat> going to give us an overview of the uh, Africa initiatives and of the other calls, which are particularly, let's say, open to uh, the participation of non-European uh, Union actors. Fadila, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Raniero, and thank you, Emilio, for organizing this uh, excellent UNIMED meeting. Um, as our director, uh, Madame Cristina Russo, actually mentioned, I will now take you more, let's say, uh, within the concrete uh, things so that you uh, can see indeed, as Christina mentioned, the various opportunities which are actually now opened uh, to, uh, let's say, the, uh, uh, to, to strengthen the cooperation with our partners uh, from the, the Southern Mediterranean. So before I get in, I just would like to check with you if you have my presentation. And if you don't, no problem. I'll just share the one that I have online. Um, Raniero, shall I share it or you have it? No, no, I, I don't have it. If you, if, okay, if let you me share. share it, okay, so I try to share. Can I you see? Know. Not yet. No, oh, 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 oh. Okay. Are you allowed to share? I, 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 to collaborate with others, da, da, da. I try to share, it says share, so, but Thank I... You. You have to select the window that you want to share. Okay, let me see. Oh, that's not good. So where shall I share screen? There we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. And normally it's selected. Can you see it now? Uh, it's coming. Oh. Not yet, but it's but coming. I hope so. Yes, now we can Very share. good. Very good. So let me go with you. Oops, to the very beginning, and of course I will not repeat what has been said 
um, in an excellent way, actually, by, by my director, Cristina Russo, about the openness of our program and about the fact that it's indeed the most open, open program in the world. I will actually go straight with you to uh, the presentation of uh, 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 maybe just a word on Horizon Europe, even if this was actually already uh, very well covered, but just to actually refresh for you, uh, you know, a little bit our thoughts. Can you see the slides well now? Uh, you should put it in presentation mode, please. Okay, you let me... See part of it. I'm sorry, I don't, and, you know, I'm not very good for these kind of things, uh -huh. but definitely try to put it. Uh, on the bottom part, there is a button to send the presentation in, in full mode. D'accord. I try, I look, but for the moment, I don't see anything, decidedly. I'm sorry, slideshow, I think it's that. And it should be. Yes, that's good. Okay, sorry colleagues, I'm, I'm working for DG Research and Innovation, but I'm not the best one for these things, sorry. <laughs> So this was just, dear colleagues, to actually refresh a little bit your mind and, and remind you a little bit about our program, about the three pillars that you know very well, about the way the program is structured, and uh, you know that it's close to uh, 100 million euros, and you know that the, the vast majority of, of, of these pillars but essentially, of course, the second pillar on the global challenges is actually open to the uh, cooperation. Just a few words on, on this um, openness of, of our program. Um, I, you need to know that, um, you know, not only the program is, let's say, generally open to the world, as, as Christina mentioned, um, but in addition to this openness, let's say, you will see, and this is what I will now specify for you, um, and I will, I will of course try to, 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 to sum up a little bit. In addition to this general openness, we also uh, decided to actually have some specific initiatives uh, in order to enhance our cooperation uh, with some of our partners. And now I will actually, you know, specifically dedicate, let's say, my presentation to two of these strategic partners. Uh, the one is, um, let's say, the African partners, and, and the others is the South uh, Mediterranean partners. And why do, do I tell you about the uh, so-called Africa Initiative? Well, for a simple reason, is that many, many amongst, uh, you know, uh, the South Med, so to say, uh, scientists are actually completely eligible uh, to, these, uh, to this initiative because, uh, you know, uh, the, the Africa initiative is not only about uh, sub-Saharan Africa, but it's also about Northern Africa. So it's also, of course, completely relevant to the community uh, that is present today. Uh, so I will now tell you a couple of words about this Africa uh, initiative. Um, the Africa Initiative is actually the immediate answer that uh, DG Research and Innovation has given uh, to, let's say, the uh, uh, to the guidance of our leaders. I explain. Uh, you will remember that we have the EU Africa High Level Policy Dialogue going on for 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 for, for close to fifteen years, uh, which is known as the HLPD. Uh, the most recent important event of this dialogue took place last July, when the ministers of research and innovation on both sides have actually gathered under the leadership of the two commissioners in charge, Commissioner Maria Gabriel, of course, our commissioner, the European Commissioner in Charge of Research and Innovation and her counterpart at the African Union Commission, Commissioner Sarah Agbore, uh, ministers have gathered under this double leadership and actually decided to give us the, let's say, to, to uh, decided to focus our um, efforts uh, in the coming years on four pillars of research that you can see here. Uh, these, uh, you know, four pillars are public health, green transition, innovation and technology revolution, and capacity building. So our answer to this request made uh, by the ministers, one of our answers is not the only one, was actually the Africa Initiative. 
And this Africa Initiative, to cut a very long story short, is actually a publication of course within the first course of Horizon Europe last June, publication of calls targeting Africa. If you look at these calls, you will see that they follow four paths, public health, green transition, innovation and technology revolution, and capacities for science that you can see here in this slide. We didn't decide on these four pillars by chance. We decided on these four pillars because this was the decision of our leaders on both sides. And thus, we actually published a number of calls for proposals. If you look at them, it's actually more than 30 calls, to be precise, 36 calls. And if you look at the amount of budget that was raised, we are talking about close to 350 million euros that are all you know, targeting Africa. So these were published on the 16th June, and now, just to give you a little bit more explanations on these four pillars and on these various goals. I am not going to get into the details. This is not the day today, of course. Do not worry. These slides are at your disposal. They will be given to you. But this is just to give you a little bit of a flavor of what it is that you can find behind this, let's say, um, various goals. 36 schools, 350 million. So if you take the first pillar addressing the uh, uh, public health, of course, the major you know, uh, topic behind the pillar is actually the European and uh, Developing Countries Clinical pa um, Trial Partnership, known as well as the EDCTP. And you can see here that the European Commission intends to do a major effort because the proposed EU contribution is actually 800 million euros. So, you know, major efforts done uh, within, you know, the EDCTP and to go actually further. This is of interest to Northern Europe, to Northern Africa, because uh, you know that uh, actually one of, let's say, the novelties of the new edition of EDCTP course is that it will not be targeting Sub-Saharan Africa only, it will actually also target the north of Africa. And then, of course, it is completely relevant to you, colleagues. Let me go a little bit further and tell you now a little bit more about what we call the green transition. Of course, this is a topic which is extremely large and which is, of course, cross-cutting to a number of issues such as food security, you will not be surprised, such as sustainable agriculture and climate change, but also issues such as sustainable energy or mobility. These are issues which are all under this, you know, major and large, let's say, pillar addressing the green transition. Let me get with you until, uh, into a bit more details to tell you a little bit more about what we have as goals. So here you can see the various goals that are actually open now under this green transition pillar. I will not tell you the codes, you can see them. So you see the title of the code, you see the year, because all these codes have been published in June, last June, but for some of them, the deadline is October, November, December. For some others, the deadline is next year, but we announced them already. So this is where you can see sometimes the deadline 2022. When it's 2021, it's the usual codes, let's say published, announced with a deadline of approximately six months. You will recognize in some of these calls, I keep on going, so you will see, of course, the details of the calls, but if you look at the various calls, you see addressing, you know, issues such as the, 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 the food uh, security, water energy nexus, uh, such as the mobility, the roads, the transports, uh, such as the African food series, etc. One thing that you should keep in mind is that, of course, these goals are also serving this high-level policy dialogue that we have with Africa. And you will not be surprised to see some of the goals serving some of the partnerships that we are busy implementing. With Africa. You know that we have all in all, we have four partnerships going on. Huh? We have one on food security, 
known as the FNSSA, for Food and Nutrition Security and Sustainable Agriculture. We have one on climate change and sustainable energy, known as the CCSE. We have one on innovation and technology revolution. And of course, we have a major one on health. Of course, some of these goals are also designed to actually come and fit in, serve some of the partnerships that we are busy implementing. And you can see number eight, one health approach for food, nutrition, security, and sustainable agriculture. And between brackets, you see the FNSSA. This is one of our very successful partnership with Africa that we try as well to serve within the various schools that we are currently publishing. This green transition pillar is important, of course, and you have a number of schools that are actually you know, within this pillar. Again, I will not get into the details of them. My presentation is supposed to be much too short for that, but just to give you an idea. Let's get into the third pillar on innovation and technology. So there you will find a number of goals, again, which aim is, is really to try and strengthen the cooperation between us and our African partners on the side and innovation and technology revolution. We're also talking about quite a tricky area when it comes to our cooperation with third countries, that is to say research infrastructures. Uh, you know that there is a real need on that side. You also know that the framework program is not completely designed to do this outside from the EU, but there are also goals which are actually trying to answer and serve this challenge. Let me now go to the fourth and, and last pillar, which is a very important one. Uh, this is uh, the pillar called capacities for science. So there, what it is that we are trying to, to do, we are actually trying to strengthen the capacities, the scientific capacities in, in, in our, let's say, partner countries. And this is a very wide, very wide pillar, which is really addressing issues extremely different, such as, you know, human capacities on the one hand, and we are there talking about education, training, um, really, I mean, issues that are really making us work very closely together with our colleagues of teaching education and culture. Uh, but you also have issues such as infrastructures capacities. You also have issues such as human capacities in the sense of, you know, um, uh, how do you, how does science help to the policy making process and these kind of issues that you can find. How does science support policy makers? So there you have a whole lot of issues getting into this, you know, capacities for science, which are really, you know, addressing so-called hard sciences, but also social sciences together. So, uh, you know, we have, you know, all together, these four pillars are, if you'd like, uh, all together, they are uh, summarizing what we call the, uh, let's say, Africa initiatives, initiative, which is this major call that, uh, we, that we have published uh, last June. As I was telling you, colleagues, this is not, you know, this was not from the scratch, of course. We have, with, with, with our African partners, uh, uh, an ongoing, long story cooperation, you know, from which we actually developed a number of partnerships, implemented a number of partnerships, as I told you, in the field of health, of course, with the European and Developing Countries Clinical Partner Trial Partnership, which is going on for a long time, but also in other areas in which we have been extremely successful, such as the notion of food security. This is a partnership which is going on, the FNCC, for quite some time, since 2010, and on which we actually raised quite some substantial you know, funding, you know, you, as you can see, yeah, more than, than 380 million euros. We have another partnership which is functioning very well, addressing climate change and sustainable energy. And we have another one, you know, uh, on, 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 techno on innovation, uh, which, which I told you about, which is also uh, quite, a successful, quite a successful partnership. 
colleagues, in order to have this success with our African partners, we consider in DG Research and Innovation that it is extremely important to work hands in hands with the DG, which is in charge of, uh, you know, supporting the development. This is DG International Partnerships, DG INTPA, which was in the past known as DG TEPCO. Our director, Director Christina Rousseau, uh, has since her leadership of this program really worked on strengthening the links with DG INTPA as much as possible. You know, with the director in charge of Africa and DG IMPA, director Sandra Kramer, with a number of, of, of uh, you know, uh, key actors in DG IMPA. And her job has really consisted these last couple of months and years to actually strengthen the cooperation between our instrument that you know well, colleagues, Horizon Europe, and the instrument led by DG IMPA, which is the Neighborhood Development and International Cooperation Instrument, which is known as the NDT instrument, that you probably know very well, because this is the instrument that intervenes when it comes to the overall cooperation with the Southern Mediterranean countries, not only in the field of research and innovation, but overall. Why is that, let's say, a strengthening of cooperation between us between our policies, the development or international cooperation policies, and the policies of research and innovation, so important. Why is it so important to really work hands in hand? For a simple reason. It is because we in DG Research and Innovation believe that investing in research and innovation is good for the sustainable development. You remember the Lisbon strategy? Extremely important for us to invest part of the GDP in research and innovation. Not like this, or not because one morning in DG Research and Innovation, we woke up and thought, oh, let's do that. No, because we have some proof that this is good for sustainable development. And we consider in DG Research and Innovation that if this equation, so to say, is good for the European countries, there are no reasons to believe that it's different from our partners in Africa, and in the southern mid. And this is why, if we want to succeed, we actually have to work hand in hand with this DG that is intervening when it comes to supporting the development, sustainable development, or support international partnerships, in order for them to accept the idea that part of, let's say, this support to development has to go to supporting, let's say, research and innovation capacities, so to say. So this is why it is so important for us to work hands in hands, and this is what Christina is doing, with DG INTPA and of course with DG AIAC. So that you know this link between research and innovation, sustainable development, education and training is made. And of course, this, you know, as I was telling you, it is important not only for the NDT, but it is also important for what DGA Act is doing. That is to say, you know, all the mobility, researchers' mobility, students' mobility, mobility of the youth, mobility of the less youth, but the need in the end of the day to actually establish a direct link between research and innovation, education and training, sustainable development, the virtuous triangle, uh, so to say. Um, just a short word on, you know, our wish to actually go even further in the EU-AU partnership and establish together a joint EU-African Union innovation agenda. So this is really, let's say, our job for the month and the years to come is really to work on this EU-African Union innovation agenda that we want to develop together with, as I said, our colleagues in DG INTPA and in DG uh, Education and Culture for the reasons that I just told you. Before I stop, because I see that I have been quite long now and I do not want to overpass the time that was given to me, just a short word, of course, on what is uh, relevant to you uh, today. 
and the Union for the Mediterranean Regional Platform in, in Research and Innovation. Of course, you know these issues much better than I do. You know very well that the three priorities that were actually decided by, you know, this uh, you know, platform allowing the uh, exchange and the discussions between senior officials when it comes to the South Med has actually decided to focus uh, the, 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 our efforts in the years to come on climate change, renewable energy and health. And of course, you will thus understand the link that we actually decided to make with, you know, the ongoing um, uh, relationship and dialogue that is going on with Africa, because of course, you can see the links with actually your own dialogue. And you can see that it is obvious that we actually have to work together and, and, and you know, at least work on the cross issues, on the cross cutting issues between the various dialogues between, because it seems obvious to me that, you know, the roadmaps that you're actually, you know, that you have adopted uh, last July and that you, you are working on have, of course, some, you know, common points with the various roadmaps that we are deploying and developing uh, for, uh, for Africa. Just a last word, colleagues, on the calls, because you would not, of course, <laughs> uh, forgive me if I, I spent all that time to, to tell you about the Africa calls, which are, of course, let's say, uh, my speciality, me and, and our team, but, but of course, uh, even more relevant to you, you know very well, and Christina mentioned it, uh, that uh, there are, of course, some calls which are already published and which are targeting not only Africa, but also the South Med per se, uh, you know, a, a long a number of clusters. I will not get into the details, but you can see them here. On, on my slide, which is giving you some sort of a sum up of the cores which are which are targeting uh, the Mediterranean region, and of course you have heard uh, from from my director uh, the fact that uh, this you know efforts that we are deploying already now, and you can see it within uh, you know this. Um, mention of course in uh, in in the various clusters here on cluster one cluster two and cluster six you will see it I'm, I'm not getting to the details but you heard actually from from Christina herself that we are actually working already now on uh, let's say um, you know a South Mediterranean initiative so after the Africa initiative, the next target now, and, and you heard it from Christina herself, so there is no need for me to kind of, you know, hide anything. Uh, our director actually said it. We are indeed working now on strengthening our cooperation with the South Mediterranean. And the idea is indeed to actually be able uh, for the for the next course and hopefully the second course already of Horizon uh, Europe to 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 deploy for our partners in in the Southern Med the same kind of efforts as the ones that we have been deploying uh, with our uh, African partners. That is to say, to really try and have a, you know a specific call uh, and a specific initiative addressing the South Mediterranean in order to. I really try and implement the roadmaps in a, in a, in an even more let's say uh, detailed and specific way uh, than than done so far. So these I will finish now. This is just to give you some uh, information on 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 uh, you know these uh, these uh, sites where you can uh, where you can find some information. But I'm sure that you you know all of that all of that by heart. And uh, and a little uh, you know a little word of the of of our commissioner insisting on uh, on the importance of uh, of uh, of the uh, you know science and and, and uh, uh, research cooperation uh, with uh, with Africa and uh, and just to thank you, dear colleagues, uh, for your uh, for your patience. To apologize to you and to uh, Raniero and Emilio if I've been a little bit long and to tell you that of course I will remain with you in case uh, in case you would have some uh, some some questions and to of course let you know that of course this uh, presentation is at your full disposal thank you very much the floor is yours colleagues uh, thank you very much uh, for this very extensive presentation 
And don't worry for the time. We are very happy to uh, have as much information as, information as possible uh, about uh, uh, the, the ways uh, in which uh, Southern Mediterranean partners can participate in, uh, in, uh, in Horizon Europe. Uh, and uh, of course, I think I can uh, anticipate what I'm sure my director is going to say, uh, which is that if you are going to launch uh, a, a specific initiative about Southern Mediterranean uh, research and innovation cooperation, you can consider the UNIMED the network at your full disposal to facilitate this process. And uh, of course, uh, uh, not only in terms of networking, but also in terms of what we have learned in all these years uh, uh, in terms of uh, cooperation in, uh, in the area of research and innovation. So uh, you can, uh, Fadila, you can close the, uh, can I ask you to close the uh, uh, screen sharing? Yes, Raniero, don't. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, now, unless uh, uh, so, now the, the the floor is open for uh, for questions. There are two ways in which you can ask questions. You can write them in the chat, or you can raise your hand, and my colleague will give you will give you the floor. Uh, while we are waiting for uh, some questions to pop up, Marcello, would you like to comment on these two uh, uh, key? interventions that we have heard. Yes, let me re, uh, connect with my video. Thanks a lot, Fadila, because uh, it was obviously extremely interesting and important. And I think, as I said at the beginning, that uh, our members, in particular from North Africa, but not only, can uh, find a major role on this and uh, some more opportunities for the future. Um, I'm, I'm, I have a question related to the differences among associated countries and not associated countries. Uh, at the end of the day, the program is open to all research institutions, but what we can suggest for associated partner countries and not and for not associated partner accounts in terms of how to improve their participation in the program and so on. And in addition, if possible, the if the role about the folk, the national focal point, how to interact with the national focal point, how to uh, in a way um, announce the role for improve the participation of South Med, I mean, South Med partners. We cannot hear you, Fadila. Voice. Oh, oh okay. I'm sorry. Thanks. Sh shall, uh, would you like me to answer, Marcello, or, yes, or shall we? Yes, if possible. Yes, in the meantime, that we wait for a question. Oh. Sure. Um, let, let me start with the, um, the, the association. Um, you know that, um, Marcello, you know that many of our, let's say, we have a cooperation agreement with many of the, the South Mediterranean countries, as you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's the case with, uh, of course, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Algeria, uh, a number of them. Um, but you also know that um, there is only one country in, in the region with which there is an association agreement, uh, and this is Tunisia. And this was the case for uh, Horizon uh, 2020. Of course, we are now in Horizon Europe, and of course, you know that there are discussions going on um, for at least you know, two countries, others might, might come in, in, in the future, but for at least two countries, one, one is Tunisia and it's about renewing uh, the association agreement and the other, as, as you probably know, is, is of course Morocco, which is uh, you know, uh, exchanging with, with us and with my uh, 
voices, so to say. My director, of course, who intervened, Christina, also the director general, and, and exchanging on a potential of association, which is uh, something in the pipeline so, so far. So, um, um, well, if, if you looked a little bit at Horizon Europe, you will find out that uh, um, First, let me say that it is true that the majority of the program is actually open to the participation of third countries. Huh? This is why we really say that this is the most open program to the world. There's no discussion about that. And, and really, I mean, especially when you take Pillar 2 on the global challenges, it is really nearly completely open uh, to the participation of third countries. Uh, so from that point of view, um, the association is not of, of, let's say, not of a real added value huh? compared to the possibility of participating within, you know, uh, let's say, topics which are in any case open. It, especially when you remember that association also means payment. Hmm? It is, of course, if you associate it to the to the um, to the program, you of course contribute to the funding of the program, and for some countries, this is quite an important part, uh, you know, of budget and and quite. Uh, you know, uh, let's say uh, an argument which can be, uh, you know, uh, an argument convincing that it is uh, not uh, such an interesting operation, so to say. But then, colleagues, we are here together and we are telling each other things. You also know that some of the pro that some parts of the program are not completely open to, uh, you know, the third country partners, many parts, parts which we consider as being completely strategic to uh, the EU. And of course, you will not be surprised if I tell you that some, you know, issues in the security research, some issues in the space uh, research, some others in the industry, of course, we consider that it's only uh, the member states or the associated countries that can actually have an access to these kind of, of topics. And there, and there, you see, of course, the difference between these countries which are associated and the ones that are not. Of course, you also know that there are various sorts of associations. This is the difference with the past. In the past, you were associated to the program. That was it. You contribute, you associated to the whole program. It is not the case today. Today, you have different levels of association. So making you associated doesn't mean that you will have an access to the whole program. This is still negotiated, as you know, huh? uh, for many reasons. Also, the you know various uh, difficulties that we have with a number of, let's say, um, countries such as China and to quote nobody. So these things. <laughs> are under discussion for the moment and nothing is really clear for the moment being yeah, to, to answer you frankly but one thing is 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 for sure is that there are many opportunities still open in the program which i think the southern med scientists should actually seize and grasp before even you know thinking of getting the country associated i mean already now what we have is i think already a lot as opportunities to to cooperate that association of course should remain somewhere because of course it is something that one can think about in the future the ncps in marcello are extremely important extremely important for us they are really the backbone eh? because they are the ones you know uh, long ago i was working in the social economic program of teaching research and innovation and to be honest with you uh, we had very, very little, uh, this has changed since then, but at that time, and I'm telling you about 20 years ago, there was very, very little on the side of international cooperation. It was very, very much European. And part of my job was, of course, to go in the member states and explain the social sciences program, you know. And I remember in the universities and the research centers, people were more or less lost. And they really appreciated a lot to actually see someone, you know, with a face to eyes about explaining to them the program, getting into the details of the program, you know. And if this is so much needed within the EU, I can imagine, <laughs> and, and of course I know, since I am in the international cooperation, that this is even more important for our country partners, which are far 
you know. So the national contact points are the ones who are really our porte voix, so to say. The other ones will bring the, you know, the information. And for us, they are extremely important. So to be honest with you, Marcello, we are even currently reflecting, this is an internal reflection, but I'm sharing it with you. We are even reflecting on how to actually strengthen these networks of NCPs. It is not obvious because this is something which is normally completely led and it is normal nationally by the governments. And this is something that one can understand. But then on the other hand, we feel at the European Commission that we need to find a way to support this movement because it is important to us. So we are actually working on that currently. And we might come up with some ideas in the near future. Thank you, Fadila, for this. And you know, obviously, that you can, for what we can do modestly, obviously, you can count on us on our network on our members to to improve the participation of SAFMED and also to give to them the the, the right the right uh, role in, in this important program please uh, Daniel. well <clears throat> just on on this issue of uh, uh, the uh, support to our South Mediterranean countries in uh, partners in participating, I have a question from the Libyan Academy. Uh, they say, th this question is to you, Professor, they call me Professor, well, not the Professor. <laughs> they call me, uh, for me, Raniero. As you know, we Libyan University are very weak in preparing Europe, uh, Euro Horizon Europe proposals. So what is your suggestion in this regard? Now, uh, with Marcello, we have been uh, uh, working on this, uh, on this issue for some time, and we have uh, conceived also uh, a sort of, a, uh, let me call it a training program, training webinars, which we already delivered some, to some of the universities uh, in order to help them preparing uh, uh, writing, writing proposals. Because uh, uh, Fadila, I have to say that after 35 years of working with the framework program, because I was a project officer in the first uh, framework program in 1985, <laughs> I have to say that I still have some difficulties in writing a proposal. So it is not uh, as straightforward as, as we might expect to be. And of course, for countries which has uh, had a lower story history of participation. It is clear that sometimes they get lost in terms of work packages, uh, gender equality plan, uh, path to innovation impact uh, uh, pathways and, and things like that. So we, uh, I think because it is badly needed, uh, I think with Marcello, we are going to intensify this, uh, uh, this kind of activities where we uh, deliver webinars on how to make a proposal. But of course, if you can provide us uh, some, uh, uh, some support, uh, some hints, and also it would be great if so, uh, some, either you or a member of your staff could intervene online, could deliver some, uh, uh, some presentation from Brussels uh, about key aspects of participation. Uh, I think it would be good and, uh, and useful also in support of the, the countries where there are NCPs, but uh, there are countries where, where there is no, uh, there is not an NCP. So uh, we, we have to, uh, we have to uh, uh, support the participants. Absolutely, Raniero, and thank, oh, yeah, you can see me. Thank you for that. And just to say as well to the colleagues, to the colleague from Libya and also to the other participants to support what you just said, Raniero. Really, we are at your disposal. Huh? Do not forget that. I mean, we, it's either me or someone of, of, of my team, or we will always find someone uh, to be able to, but especially now that we have these video conferences, at least something good of this whole mass <laughs> that started with the pandemic is that uh, we can intervene in a very easy way. And, and thus, we will always be here to support UNIMED of course, uh, to support you supporting the colleagues in a sense. Eh? Uh, but, but of course, please use us 
we are here, we can, you know, uh, uh, do these sessions, uh, um, you know, we can get into the details of the framework program with you. Um, and, and of course, Raniero, you're perfectly right. I mean, uh, I, I joined the commission <laughs> in 96, and this was already uh, in, in digital research and innovation. And I can see that, yeah, I mean, we are trying, yeah, every form of program, we are trying to make it easier than the one before, but people still, still have huge difficulties to actually understand this program. And it is always much better to have someone to talk to. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. So there is, uh, Fadila, there is uh, an, uh, a question in the chat which is addressing to you. They want your email address. So yeah, sure. I'll, I'll write it in the chat. Okay. So it, it's very dangerous what uh, what you just said, Fadila. You know that. Right? You expose yourself <laughs> to a number of, of, of requests for support from our side, but uh, we know that. We are always extremely overloaded, so we appreciate very much what you can do for us. Okay, so uh, any other questions from uh, from the floor? Doesn't seem to be the case. When I when I when I deliver a presentation and at the end there are no questions, I always wonder whether everything was very very clear or everything was so obscure that they don't even manage to formulate. <laughs> A question, but I think that uh, it's not the case. Um, there is another question from our uh, friend Gibriel, uh, who would like to receive the presentation. No, Fadila, if you can send us the presentation to us, we will uh, we will send it to all, uh, not only to the participants in this webinar, but also to the uh, mm. uh, to the pro to the uh, webinar. Now, there is a question. I think the problem is usually how to start, Amani says. Where do we start from? <laughs> when you know nothing about the program, it's clear that you look at this huge amount of information. And, and uh, uh, of course, uh, this is also part of our, of our um, job. Uh, to, to support the people in navigating in the sea of European programs. Uh, we, uh, as, as you know, Fadila, and, and also the other partners, uh, uh, Unimed is structured into a number of subnetworks, which are thematic subnetworks. And you can find the list of the thematic subnetworks in the, uh, uh, you know, on our website. So there is one on climate change, one on migration, uh, on uh, innovation in education, etc. So I think uh, in order to simplify things, it would be better to start with the sectoral approach. Instead of looking at all the uh, universe of Horizon Europe, you select uh, the, the, the cluster where you are more, where you are more um, interested in. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, Fadila, the first thing to do is to download the work program of the of the uh, of the cluster in which you are interested, and read this document. There is a it's normally a very huge document. So it can be up to four hundred pages, but there is a very good table of contents which helps you to find. And this is really the starting point. Uh, and then once you identify some topics, then you you can get in touch with us and try to to uh, uh, to find out how to how to move. Um, Okay, so uh, other people say that uh, the webinars will be useful. So uh, I'm afraid we have put ourselves now into problems uh, saying this, but uh, this is this is part of our job. So other questions from the floor. We have another ten minutes left. Um, No, it doesn't. Uh, thanks a lot. Is it possible to? Yes. Uh, Salvador is asking also for the PowerPoints. We're going to circulate these. And um, okay, well, I think uh, that uh, we can, uh, if there are no other questions, we can close here. Marcello, do you want to make some closing remarks? Before we thank Fadila and Christina, I'm sorry, I'm fighting with my camera. Uh, 
Okay, first of all, again, thank you very much, Fadil, and to all your colleagues that are working with us uh, for this uh, for this new era for all of us, the new Horizon Europe program. Uh, I hope that we will continue this discussion in presence in Brussels soon on a bilateral dimension, but also for the coming union week. Um, this year we will we are going to celebrate our first years of UNIMED. The next UNIMED assembly will be in December, unfortunately this time online, but I hope that in the next assembly in presence in uh, probably in summer time 2022 in Amman at the University of Jordan premises, you will be uh, with us to, to see where we are in particular for the next uh, the next work program looking at the, the roadmap where we are working on but in any case we will try to maximize the, the our participation also in the current work program uh, we are trying to push all our partners and southern mediterranean government but also european government uh, to to try to organize again a euro mediterranean ministerial meeting on higher education and research i know that the task on research is already under discussion. I hope that it will be possible to have also a discussion on the, the higher education dimension and not only the research one. And I think that as we are doing to, to try to support as much as possible the, the universities in the region in terms of uh, to reform governance of higher education, will be also possible in the research dimension because we need a more autonomous uh, system, not only in our education, but also research. And I'm sure that following your, your work plan, for following your uh, development for the international cooperation with, with Southern Mediterranean and African research institutions, we will be able in a way to improve also the research dimension, not only to act together, but also to try to reinforce the governance of our the research system in in submet and i hope that we will have more other more other occasion to talk and to debate about that and thank you again for your participation and i hope that our members will uh, benefit in a way of not only of this presentation but in particular of your uh, availability of your kindness with us and uh, thank you again and i hope to see you soon in Brasa. thanks so thank you, Marcello. I think we can we can close. I would like to thank uh, uh, Fadila, please. Also, uh, Fadila, thank uh, Christina on our behalf for for her intervention. Uh, just a final remark. Uh, you said that one very important thing, Fadila, that Christina is working uh, to strengthen the links with the uh, uh, policy and, and operational instruments with the other DGs, like DGEC, uh, Infa, etc. Uh, in, in, in our little uh, scenario at UNIMED, we have already been doing this for some years. For instance, uh, there are many uh, Libyan colleagues around the table and I delivered a, a training course on European projects and on uh, framework program to many of them in the frame of an Erasmus Plus capacity building uh, project. We have used the Erasmus capacity building uh, in order to uh, try and deliver some training on how to access uh, the uh, <clears throat> European program. So we have started already trying to create links and bridges between the, uh, within uh, these two and we will go on in this way. So thank you very much to everybody and let's keep in touch. Bye bye. Bye, bye. Bye to all of you. Bye bye.